Hello and welcome back to question 10. This is a maxima minima question under differentiation. And this is such a great question because these are the kind of things you do in a job, right? You have to design a certain product, but with some constraints. So let's take a look at this question. It says that a factory is tasked to design an open cylindrical container. What is that? It means you have a cylinder, you put things inside. Of course, you want to keep the top open. That is an open container, right? Say you want to sell baked beans or tennis balls. You want to be able to put those things inside the can before you seal it, pack it and send it away. Okay, so open cylindrical container. And what is the constraint? The constraint is the surface area is 243 pi. First of all, 243 pi is a fixed number because pi is fixed. It's always 3.14159, so on and so forth. Okay, so 243 a fixed number times pi, which is a fixed number, will give you a fixed surface area. Now, why would a factory want to fix uh, the surface area of a can? That is because if you're selling big beans or tennis balls, what you want to do is you want to sell the things inside the can. The can itself doesn't really make you money. So typically, companies will just say that, hey, if you want to make cans, here's a fixed amount of money that you have. You have a fixed amount of materials to make a can. We are not going to spend any more than that. Okay? And the amount of material is kind of like the surface area of the can, if you think about it. So if you fix the amount of material, we want to fix the surface area of the can. Okay? So that is the constraint. I only have a fixed amount of material. How do I make a can that suits what I want to put inside? Right? Such a great question. Now, the radius and height of the cylinder is R and H, respectively. Show that the volume is equal to this thing over here. Now, first, let's look at the surface area of a cylindrical or of a cylinder, right? The nets of solids of an open cylinder. What is that? Okay, so the curved surface area, in case you have forgotten, right? Here I have my water bottle. Okay, and the curved surface area actually is a rectangle. If you wrap this around, right, and you open it up, right, the curved surface area actually is a rectangle. So, this out or let's draw this out oops um, some water spilled on the ipad okay so let's draw this out a rectangle the length of the rectangle is the circumference of the cylinder okay the rectangle wraps around the cylinder so the length here is 2 pi r and the breadth of the rectangle is the height of the cylinder okay and lastly i have one more surface at the bottom a circle Okay, the circle looks kind of ovalish in a 3D perspective. So this is just pi r square. And this total area, the total amount of materials I'm allowed to use is 243 pi. So my rectangle, 2 pi r h plus my circle, pi r square can only be 243 pi. Okay, so let me zoom in a bit to make my handwriting slightly more bearable. Okay, you notice that I can divide by pi throughout the left and the right. So dividing by pi, I get 2rh plus r square equals to 243. And I guess this is where students get stuck. They'll be like, okay, so what do I do? Do I solve for r? What do I do next? Okay, so here's a bit of uh, experience and a tip on how to do this kind of questions. Oops. Okay, look at what we're supposed to prove over here. You realize that this expression on the right here has no h right volume is pi r square times height h but there's no h here so it's a good idea to take what we have here and write h as the subject of the formula okay and you'll see why very soon but for now let's just do it if i want h as a subject of the formula i'll keep 2r h i'll move r square to the right hand side Divide throughout by 2R. Okay, and this is what I have for H. Next, I can write down the volume of the cylinder. Volume is pi R square H. Now, this is the important part, right? Because I do want H here, I can take this H and substitute with this, right? That is very good because, um, yeah. 
you notice that this will give me entirely something in just R and no H. So this comes with experience. If I want something that's an expression that does not have H, then I better make H the subject of the formula so I can substitute it out. Okay, so over here I can cancel one R in the denominator with one R here. I'm going to bring this two outside, so I write it as pi over two. Then this remainder R I'm going to multiply in. If you do it that way, you get exactly what the question wants you to show. Right, pi over two times this thing. And this is the answer for part one. Now you might be wondering why do we want to write things purely in terms of R and no H? Now that is in part two. Now, if this is the volume, right, and you're only given that uh, this volume is based on just an area of 243 pi, a fixed amount, then I want to maximize this volume, isn't it? Because if I'm the company, I want to make sure that I can put as much or I have as much space as possible to put in baked beans or tennis balls. Yes, I want to maximize the volume. So to get the maximum volume, I need to do DVDR. And that's such a great thing because our expression for volume has no H. Imagine if I have to do DVDR and there's a H inside there, then that would be really troublesome because H is not a constant, right? H is also changeable, okay? So I don't want to go too much into that, so let's just do DVDR first. So DVDR is pi over 2, 243 minus 3R squared. Now to find the maximum or minimum volume, right, we let DVDR be 0. Okay, if I let it be zero, it means that this thing is zero. Now, if this thing is zero, I know it's a multiplication of pi over two and this bracket. Now, if it's a multiplication, either this is zero or this is zero, correct? But I know that pi over two is not zero. It's just a fixed number, right? So this must be zero. So when we let dvdr zero, it means that two, four, three minus three r square is equal to zero. That means 3R square is equal to 243. R square is equal to 81. R equals to 9 or negative 9. Of course, I'm going to reject the negative 9 because R is the radius. A radius should be a positive number. So this is 9 centimeters. Okay, so we have not answered the question yet. Part 2 wants us to find the maximum volume of the cylinder. So I guess what most students will do is substitute 9 side here, right? But you have to be careful because what you're given might be the minimum volume. Letting dvdr equals to 0 does not give you maximum, right, straight away. It just gives you either a maximum or minimum. So we also have to prove that there's a maximum. So let's do that first. I'm going to do the second derivative test. I'm going to do d squared v dr squared. And maybe I'll do it side by side over here. d squared v dr squared. So that is going to be pi over 2, negative 6r, times negative 6r, okay? So let's look at this thing over here. Pi over 2 is a positive number, 6 is a positive number, r is going to be 9, a positive number, but we have a negative sign here that makes everything negative. Now, when d squared v dr squared is negative, we have maximum volume. Since d squared v dr squared at r equals to 9 is less than 0, v is maximum. Okay, yeah, so since this is a revision video, let's talk about why. Why is it when d square, your second derivative, d square v dr square is negative, your point is a maximum? So let's take a look at the graph, right? A simple graph like that. This is a graph with a maximum point over here. Okay, this is the highest point, so we call it the maximum point. Why should d square v dr square be zero? Now, first of all, d square v dr square is how the gradient changes as r changes, right? See, this is r, this is v, right? As r goes towards the right, right? How does the gradient change? So let's pick a point on the left, right? This gradient is positive. This gradient uh, at the center here is definitely zero. Right? And then this is negative. So you can sort of see that the gradient starts from positive, becomes zero, and then becomes negative. That is something that changes negatively, right? I have something positive, becomes more and more negative, becomes zero, and then becomes negative. 
that's why the rate of change of the gradient is negative, right? And this will give us a maximum point, okay? So you can try to remember that, uh, or you can just sketch this out in the exam very quickly for yourself, okay? So now that I proof is a maximum, let's find the actual volume. Let's take um, this over here. Let's copy it and paste it down here and substitute r equals to 9. So this is pi over 2, 2, 4, 3 times 9 minus 9 to the power of 3. And this will give you 729 pi cubic centimeters, which we know is a maximum volume. That's the answer for part 2. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the last question of this paper, question 11, kinematics.